Um, but thank you. I'd like to welcome Kimo Alameda. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we so appreciate you talking to our students today. A lot of chit chat after the presentation, which is really good. I think the kids, the more they talk about it, the more they know about it, the more they learn about it, the more they can make an educated choice not to partake in it. So thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Um, testing, can you hear me? All right. Okay, very good. Well, thank you, uh, Jason, again, uh, and we got Nylin's iPhone, uh, Kong Carvalho's, Kathleen and Sarah, okay. Good deal. All right, how's it, how's it? So yeah, let me just go and share with you what I share with your kids today. And then you guys can go and uh, ask them questions after. But I, I, I thought, you know, when I present to the to the kids, even seven, eight graders, they really get it, um, you know. And 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 you know, when I was a kid, I, nobody presented this kind of information to me, you know. And so, I mean, we got the just say no kind of a lecture, but not really understanding what we're saying no to or about. So, so this presentation is called uh, "Be Kind to Your Mind." I'll, I'll I'll go through it real real quickly, and then if you guys get any questions, but. Um, you know, choose not to use. That's the kind of messaging that we're trying to impart now. Um, but I start off right off right off the bat. I just start off with fentanyl being a um, a very dangerous drug. And so, you know, if you see this, you know, just that little bit right on top of a pencil tip can kill you. So, leading cause of death in this country, 18 to 45. We have a major epidemic in this country. Um, you know, oxys was a big issue up in the states, um, but now it's it's fentanyl and laced in, in into oxys, uh, that's a problem. So, so you know, it's good that we kind of get the word out. Um, and the drug dealers are sneaking into, they're sneaking them into these pills, uh, which makes it very dangerous. And, you know, last month I was asked by the West Hawaii today, he said, hey, Dr. Kimo, what about rainbow fentanyl? It is, is it on the island? And, and at that time, it wasn't on the island. But then like everything else, you know, my comment was, you know, it's just probably a matter of time. And that's how they quoted me. They quoted me in the paper. and. Sure enough, three days later, I get a, I get a call from, uh, you know, someone at the police department, and they say, "Yeah, Kim, we got a big drug bust in Kona, um, planting pills, you know, almost two thousand pills of rainbow fentanyl." So, you know, it's here, it's on the island, and I thought the schools did a good job of getting the word out, you know, before Halloween that hey, if you see candy that look like sweet tarts or, or any kind of wrapping that's tampered with, don't eat it, don't trust it, right? But for your information, the, the drug dealer is not targeting elementary kids or middle school kids even. They're really targeting the high school kids because that's where the money's at. You know, they get jobs now. Um, and, and they're using the different colors as a way to, you know, maybe um, differentiate between the different types of uh, doses. Um, so, but it's not really, it's not meant to target the kids. However, it's there. So how bad is it? Well, it's pretty dangerous, okay? It's a white powdered substance. Like I said, they can make them into pills. Um, just two milligrams can kill somebody. Again, the description there next to the penny, um, you know, 100 times more powerful than morphine, 50 times more powerful than heroin, uh, more deadly than cyanide. So you're talking on heavy duty drug now. Um, and and it's you know, it has hit our shores. So I show this slide because Many of them don't know Coke Breton, but you know I grew up supporting this young man, and and unfortunately he got stuck in in drugs, you know, drinking, and then I think it was meth, and now we realize that yeah, fentanyl is being laced in meth, um, and why is that? Because it's cheaper, uh, the high is according to the drug user, the high is better, um, and now we we're getting some problems, major problems. Okay, so on this island, one person every 13 days. Uh, are dying, but you know I had to update my slides. It's actually one person, one person every eleven days now, so you know it's getting worse. Um, and you know you think why would the drug drug dealers want to kill their customers? Well, first they they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how you know they're not scientists, pharmacists. You know they, they're mixing using fentanyl to cut them in in, in meth, heroin, and cocaine, and and it's, sometimes it's too much. Um, and unfortunately, in the drug culture, when somebody died from an overdose, the drug culture, they like know where they got it from because they like the drug be, be strong. Because in their drug mind, they don't think they're going to die. So they think they're invincible. So you would think it would scare away customers, no, actually attract customers. Uh, and that's a sad reality. So, 
So what does it where does it come from then? Well, it comes from the opium plant, as you can see that little poppy over there, that little seed. Um, you know, and that's where heroin is directly derived from. But then you can make them in a lab, take a little bit of that, mix them with other chemicals. That's where they get the hydrocodone, oxycodone, Percocet, Vicodin. Um, you know, and, and that's when it's prescribed. Hey, I mean, we need pain medication, right? The older we get, the more we, the more we we need pain medication. So. You know, it's a blessing, but it can be on curse. Um, and then fentanyl is 100% made inside a laboratory. So where does it come from? Uh, Mexico, China, the cartels, big, big, big gangs, drug dealers, they hire scientists for, for make them now. You know, and they pay them big bucks. Okay, and so how does it get to Hawaii? It's shipped uh, either through the internet, right, through airmail. Um, so the big drug bus had in corner, we had a big drug bus in Hilo about a month and a half ago. And, you know, it was it, it was a lot of pills um, right down the Hilo Post Office. So now they get barking, you know, uh, dogs that bark when they smell fentanyl or other drugs. So a dog, woo, 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 you know, identified a box. Cops came, followed the box to a car, uh, to the house. The guys, couple tried to get into the car, dig out, they threw the box outside. They, Arrested the couple, looked at the box, and they had almost 2,000 pills of fentanyl. And what we're finding is 40% of all the pills that's confiscated has enough uh, fentanyl to kill somebody. So, you know, that's why we're getting the word out. And you know, I'm talking to everybody and anybody who's willing to listen. And kids above fifth grade, they get it. You know, this presentation, they, they get it. Um, and so, you know, we just don't want – because. The kids, the people that's dying, the one in 11 that's dying, they actually, that's mostly the drug users that's already addicted to meth, heroin, cocaine, okay? Because they got to get them illegally, so they got to trust that wherever they get them from is, you know, it's good. Uh, obviously, it's not, right? So, um, but every once in a while, you get a kid, an innocent kid who maybe, you know, maybe one seventh, eighth grader who went with their bigger brother to a high school party, okay? And they're hanging out, right? And then... The high school kids, whatever, older kids might be doing cocaine. And and then, you know, somehow it gets ingested or, you know. So for the younger kids, it's kind of an accident. Um, but they're also putting themselves in risky situations too. So that's why it's like, hey, we got to get the word out. So what is the what is the hook? So I wanted to let the kids know that with, with all drugs, there's a hook. It's like on fish, okay, the bait and the hook. Uh, the hook for painkillers is, you know, it's relaxing. Um, I mean, it, 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 it takes away pain, but it also makes you feel like you're in la-la land. Like you get this euphoric reaction, like, oh, everything's all good, you know, and when it's not, you know, and if you're somebody with emotional pain, well, it actually fixes that too, temporarily, because it gives you a fake happiness. Um, and when I was, I had to do my knee surgery, I, I, uh, I was on Percocet. After the third day, I was double shocking all my kids, you know. It's like one of my sons said, hey, Dad, whatever you take, take two. <laughs> okay, so, you know, so I know, like, wow, this thing is heavy duty. And I get seven kids, right? So my kids is, that's why when I see your kids, I think of my kids. You know, and, and I give them the same lecture to your kids that I gave mine this morning. And, um, and you know, my, my kids is 26, 24, 22, 20, um, 18, 16, 14. I get on high school at Hilo High, senior. My I get on girl is a junior, and my boys are freshmen. So he just left intermediate school and so I, I share with them this same message uh, because we cannot be with them 24 hours a day right all we can do is give them information and hope and pray that they use good judgment so so I wanted to let them know how you can get hooked and that the addiction is for real um, now fentanyl when it's in the hospital eh, I mean that's fine when it's prescribed by a doctor so on the continuum of uh, pain medication you get you know, I don't know, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and then at the other end, you get fentanyl, like super pain medication. So somebody who maybe, I don't know, get cancer or, you know, real in real pain, they, they can be given a patch or an injection. But it's not pills or powder. It's not like that, right? So that's how it's on the streets, you know, in that form. Fake Adderall, fake hydrocodone, fake Vicodin, fake Percocet, basically fake pills um, with fentanyl inside. And that's why I told the kids, hey, you see one baggy like that with, with you know, not no more no name, it's not coming on bottle on pl the plastic, you know, it's dangerous. In, pl in fact, 40% of that can kill you. 
You just don't know which one. So it's like playing Russian roulette. So don't take anything that's not prescribed. That was my message to your kids today. You know, and then and then to the people who are already stuck on drugs, my message is you play in Russian roulette too. Because fentanyl is being laced in cocaine, in meth, and in heroin. And that's why we get plenty of people, you know, at risk. So so how are we gonna fix this problem, parents? Well, you, you know, the kids this smart, it's like you get two concepts in business, right? You get supply and you get demand. Okay, good. <laughs> Since I did it on Zoom today, that's how I was, I was like this, pretending that they was responding. I was just hoping they wasn't. We'll see. But my nephew said, hey, we was responding. We was responding. Okay, so, so you know, hey, the supply, get about. I mean, you get big, some big drug boss in the past three years, 53 pounds in the state. But 30 pounds came from this island. So our island is, you know, so even more so. So I really appreciate Principal Heather letting me come in and share this, you know, with the kids and, and with you folks as parents, you know, and then this is recorded too, so maybe can go on top of the, I don't know, the, the link, uh, Hilo links, we'll see. So, so yeah, so we get the cops, the Homeland Security, you know, they're doing the best they can for decrease the supply. And the kids get it, because when I tell them, hey, if you get plenty of supply of milk, but get a little bit demand, what's going to happen to the milk? You know, they, the milk going to spoil, uncle. <laughs> That's right. So we got to figure out how to decrease the demand too, not just the supply. So that's what we're doing. I mean, here it is, right? If if it's the leading cause of death, then the the best way to decrease the demand is through education. That's why I really appreciate the schools letting me come in, the counselors, um, you know, and the teachers reinforcing this true education. Because yes, parents, sometimes you feel like a nag. I get seven kids, I feel like a nag, but you know what? Too bad. We won't be nagging our kids until they, until it's just so that when they're at that party, they're gonna be hearing our voices. You know what I mean? So no scared and give them, nag them, okay? So here's the deal. It's like, hey, we got to give them knowledge. And you know like how we was raised? Just say no. You know, our, our parents pretty much no ask questions there, just listen. But we don't know what we were saying no to. And so now I like the kids know you say no to, to this, you know, like look at this. Because just saying no is not enough. So we like replace the word no with the word K-N-O-W. Same sound, different meaning, okay? So... Because knowledge is power, and with these kids, when they get knowledge, that's like a superpower. Because nobody go from chocolate candy to fentanyl. And that's why people say, Kimo, how come you're not just talking about fentanyl? I said, yeah, because that's the plane crash. You got to go to the airport first. You got to get on the plane. You got to, like, that's like, we don't, like, even get to that place. So we should just talk about how this thing gets started in the first place, <laughs> okay? And it gets started from these gateway drugs, so the same gateway drugs that were shared with us. I tell the kids, hey, alcohol, that's legal. Your parents might drink, uncles, aunties. You know, maybe your bigger brothers and sisters, if they're of age, you know, not illegal. Get in cough syrup, get alcohol. My mother used to make an awesome rum cake. Okay, so, but um, but that's one, that's one drug. Why? Because it's something in alcohol that mimic what we get in our brain. For, for, some, for, so for some people, right, who genetically predisposed to addictions, they can easily go from, I like it, couple of truly, some wine, whiskey, I don't know, hards, then they go to, I, I want it. And if they get emotional problems they, and they like hide their problems, then they go quickly to, I need it. And when you're in, I need it, you're stuck. That's an addiction. And so I told the kids, what is the greatest dream killer? What's the biggest dream killer? If you like kill your dreams, well, what can kill your dreams? Addictions. And so no matter what school I go, public school, private school, charter school, I ask the kids, who in your family or extended family might be in the stage of, I need it with any of these drugs, raise your hand. You wouldn't believe about 80% of kids raise their hand. I was, and then all the teachers and the administration, they're like, wow. So it's a true story. We have a substance abuse problem on our island. You know, we, we get people addicted to drugs and alcohol and, and it's killing their dreams. So, you know, our kids young yet. So like I said, no scared, nag them, tell them, keep pestering them, keep reminding them, okay? Uh, then I talked about tobacco. Now, for our days of cigarettes, uh, so I skipped this slide. Because the kids, they're doing vaping. Okay, they're mostly doing vaping. And it's an e-cigarette, but it's worse than an e-cigarette. And I told them today, I said, you know one, one vaping pen? Get 42 cigarettes inside. The nicotine is so high. It's ridiculous. And plus, get ultra-fine particles, get organic compounds, get propylene glycol. Of course, they don't know what is that, right? So I said, Google them. 
right? You can cook it. It's anti-freeze. That's what they put in a cart. Go keep them, you know, cool. Um, and then get marijuana inside. So go figure. Now, our schools, they, they're they confiscating these pens, and they're they, they talking to those kids. They're putting them on, you know, warning or, pr or probation and suspension and all. And and that's good. They, they should know. It's a serious it's a serious violation, really messing up their bodies. Now, of course, the kids are going to say, oh, but uncle, you know, help me relax. Huh? Um, you know, so, so I went through an exercise with them today. I said, hey, inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. So here's the deal. Here's what makes these drugs addictive is nicotine. There's, a, there's something in nicotine that our brain already mimic. We already get on chemical that is exactly like what's in nicotine. Same thing with alcohol. And once we start to go outside of our body to get these natural chemicals to release, the natural part of our brain, which is the dopamine reward system, it's going to shut down. And like you guys were like, we just relaxed ourselves by breathing. And when we meet somebody new, we feel good. When we complete an assignment, we feel great. That's all like natural chemical dopamine shots we're getting naturally. But once the dopamine system shut down, because the brain not stupid, the brain gonna be like, I'm not gonna work extra hard if you're already getting it from the outside. So the brain will stop producing it. And now it'll expect you to go get it from the outside. That it being relaxation, feel good. You know, when somebody, you know, when somebody tell you on joke, if you're not on drugs, you're gonna laugh. But if, if that dopamine system shut down, not funny anymore. So, so that's why it's super dangerous is because, because now if you're stuck and you got to go get it, they call that craving, you know, that's craving. Now you stay craving them because your body not making you feel good. So you feel horrible when you're in, I need it. And you try and for quit. You feel that's why people who try for quit, they grouchy. They're hard to be around because they don't feel good. They feel junk. They feel horrible. And that's why they need help. Once you're in, I need it. That's, you know, it's kind of, kind of hard, but we have help out there. That's the main thing. So I show them this slide and I show them this slide, right? And I said, so look at the, what's they going in your mouth. And for the kids who get phones, I said, take one picture, you know, go, 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 go share with your parents. <laughs> okay, so now in the beginning, vaping was like one alternative to cigarettes, but then vaping get more, chem more chemicals than cigarettes. So that can be addictive, even more addictive. And we never know, right? I never know. I thought it was water vapor, like every other parent. So, you know, but I said, no, be tricked by the adults, huh? Okay, because they're going to try to trick you with the with the different flavors, right? Because four out of five kids that I work with start, started vaping because of the flavors. The Jolly Rancher flavor, you know, the Lifesaver flavor, right? The, um, I don't know, Jolly Rancher flavor. So, you know, cotton candy, bubble gum, and now get Lihing Mui, I think. So, you know, it's crazy. Uh, and, and the kids got to know that no be tricked. They, they like you get stuck because it's a money maker. And you don't like being their money maker and being stuck and killing your dreams. Okay. So, so then I talk about marijuana as the final gateway drug. And why is this a gateway? Because it leads to worse drugs. Okay. And our brain get one cannabis um, neurotransmitter. Okay. That's why marijuana can be addictive too. Just so happened these three chemicals in marijuana, in alcohol, and in tobacco or vaping, our brain mimic. That's why you can eat lettuce, eat all the lettuce you like. You're never going to be addicted to lettuce, okay? Or, you know, poi. Go eat all the poi you like. There's nothing in poi or lettuce that mimic what we get in our brain, so we will never, ever be addicted to that. Okay, so, but just so happened marijuana, alcohol, and nicotine, we already produced that. That's where the addiction comes from. So you got to be careful because the, the hook is this relaxed feeling, distorts how the mind perceives the world, you know, so you're feeling all cool, but but you can get that through med meditation, uh, relaxation, and plus marijuana get, get 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 two major chemicals in it. One is carbon monoxide, which is what comes out of one car, and that one is tar, which is what we use for fix the roads. You have a pothole, put tar inside. Okay, so you know, so you know, so I know get medical marijuana, and like I said, you know, some of these medicines can be blessings and curses. So we, we just got to make sure that we don't get stuck in. I need it. You know, because it's easy to go from I like it because, you know, it tastes good or, or wow, it make me relax. When you go into I want it, now you're thinking about it. Like, oh, you stay at work, you're thinking about them, you're in school, you're thinking about them. And once you're in I need it, 
Now that's all you think about. And then you start to compromise your values because you need that drug for, for prevent the withdrawals because the body chemistry shifted already. Okay. Now you get people might say, hey, but marijuana natural. So my response, so is poison ivy. Okay, you know, just go and start, start eating all kinds of trees and whatever grass. Okay, so same thing, right? Uh, and get, so get plenty of tar. And so when people use them medically, you know, at least it's monitored. But kids shouldn't use them recreationally. No way. Dangerous. Okay, so the first key message I shared with your kids today was, hey, you may never start, no start. Choose not to use. Okay, we're not just saying no. We, we like you choose not to use because you know of the dangers. That's why. And plus, here's the next slide, probably the most, uh, most important slide of all, is that you like choose not to use because your brain not fully developed until age 25, right? A blue indicates parts of the brain fully developed. Yellow, red indicates parts of the brain not fully developed. So I said, hey, look, oh, you're going to be messing your brain up with different chemicals that it already produces. It'll get confused, right? And you, and you get addicted. Because research is showing addiction is a pediatric disease. It starts when you're a kid. How we know that? Because we get now we get tons and tons of research. So over 90% of the people that I work with and other health professionals work with, with when addiction started before the age of 15. So if we can put off, if these kids can put off using any drug, then the better the chances of them not getting this brain disease. And it is a brain disease. And you know what? Nobody chooses addiction. So if you know anybody in your family addicted, it's like it's like heart disease. Nobody chooses heart disease. You eat one Big Mac today, some bacon tomorrow, a whopper next week. Now you get heart disease. It's a lifestyle, right? So, and you don't know when your brain can, can shift over to the addiction. Couple trulies today, smoke one joint tomorrow, vape next week. Now you just stuck, and you know that's the danger. So if you look at that slide over there, you can see, wow, if they first used, you know, these gateway drugs by 21, the chance of addiction under 5%. And if you wait till you're 25, chance of addiction, almost nothing. So that's the second message. Wait, right? Because at 25, get other things happening. That's awesome. You're going to get on a job, probably get drug tests. You're going to be an adult. You're going to be surrounding yourself with people who, uh, you know, if, if you never stay away from drugs, or your, your, your circle of support can be more, growth mindset and not, you know, drug mindset. And, and you're just going to be in a better place. So that's what I tell my kids. You know, it's, I'm not telling you no. I'm telling you wait. Wait till your brain fully develops so you can make one informed decision on that. Okay? Because once the gates have opened, now you're at risk of other drugs like uppers or stimulants. And this is where it gets really bad. Like meth. Because now you're drinking, planning, maybe you stay at one party, somebody tell you, hey, go snort that, or go smoke that, right? Now you're really stuck on another drug that's even harder to get, get rid of. So for this slide, I just told them straight, you know, the seven, eighth graders, I mean, they don't need to know all their words. I just said, if you're at one party, you're somebody's house, you see powder, all of that, you see crystals, you see, I don't know, maybe you're waiting for your mother to pick you up at your friend's house, but your friend's older brother get, get smoking from one pipe, that's drugs, that. You got to know it's now a good place for be, okay? Walk outside, wait for your mother guys or father to pick you up or walk home if it's in the neighborhood. No stay there. Not good. I like them see what look like. That's, that's, that's drugs that. If you see somebody lighting one spoon, it's drugs that. You see one, well, I don't know, a razor blade with something that looks like powder. Not good. Bad party. Call your older brother, older sister, come pick you up, okay? Because two things going to happen. I told your kids, I said, one, they're going to get arrested. Is that the scene of a crime? Because it's all illegal, right? Or, or, or they might drink, you know, get all drunk. This is the high school kids are about, right? And then somebody tell them, hey, go sniff this line. Wow. Now get fentanyl in there. Now they don't get out. Now that's how the teenagers, they die in the unfortunate ones, that every once in a while. And that's the danger. And that's why we're making this presentation to your kids, you guys. Because, you know, it's hard to talk to our kids, right? Seven, eighth grade, they don't like to listen to us. So that's why I think it's our job too, teachers, counselors, so like, hey, parents, we're helping you out, okay? Because I know they probably, like my own kids, and I'm the psychologist and my wife is a school teacher, and them too, they turn their ears off. So it's good that we're all kind of like on the same page, you know, and we're all kind of raising our kids together in, in that respect. So, so what we do then? Well, in the meantime, I got to let the kids know that 
hey, as parents, we get right for being paranoid, right? Because our average party, be a secrets marijuana. Nowadays, the average party, be a secrets marijuana, pills, vaping stuffs, cocaine, meth, heroin, okay? And get fentanyl laced in all of those, except on vaping pen, yet, okay? About two months ago, we were saying that fentanyl couldn't be laced in marijuana. Well, we just lost, anecdotally, we just lost a kid from Pune, uh, and it was shared that, that he died from fentanyl laced in his marijuana joint. They took one pill, an oxys, and laced it like that. So we just pray that it's not going to get somehow into a vaping pen, because it would be very dangerous for us. So that's what the kids got to know. I told them, your parents are going right for be paranoid, and your parents should be asking you the four W's whenever you leave the house. So what is that, Uncle? It's where you're going, who you're going, who you're going to be with, what you're going to be doing, and when you're coming home, okay? And, and if you guys can remember that four W's, you know, always ask your kids that because we'll, we'll be like one nightmare if somehow they don't come home and, you, and you're worried, so you call the cops, and the cops say, oh, so who they with? And you're like, I, I never ask. Okay, so uh, what they're doing? I, I don't know. When they, I don't know, you know. So you, like, kind of know what's happening uh, in case something Unfortunately, it happens. At least you get answers. So. All right. And then what can they do to feel good? Well, I told them, hey, if you feel sad or you get an anxiety, just go back to that place you used to go for feel good and relax. Can be the place, can be one person you talk to, maybe something you did, maybe so people, place, or thing. Uh, and, and go there. That's a, that's a good start, right? But if not, here's some research that shows exercise releases that dopamine reward system, okay? Working out, walking, jogging, playing sports, getting active, exercise with somebody else, teams, clubs, maybe just go walk around the, the, uh, the park or around the neighborhood, ride, ride your bike, um, music, you know, listening to music, but, but playing music too, uh, setting goals. This is all research now. I can give you the reference. Setting goals, because when you accomplish your goal, Oh, you get that dopamine rush, right? Meditation, prayer, feel like relax, prayer is a good way. Yoga, me, I go to the sauna, uh, positive self-talk, you know, so get, just do, doing something new. So when people get off of drugs and they're trying to stay off, usually they go, they, they, they get hobbies, right? And let them go get hobbies. You know, especially if they're older, they're going to try to build one little house in the back or they're like, make, you know, that's because they try to forget their, reward system, the natural chemicals for start firing again so they can feel good naturally. And then I put in a plug for all the video games. Okay, so I thought you guys don't play Fortnite or Minecraft. And I see them all squiggling in their seats. So I, I knew they was laughing. But I said, at least you guys don't play Call of Duty. Yeah? And they all was like, oh, because that's the games my kids play. So I told them, when your parents tell you, get off of the video games, get off. Because they know when is it too much. Because they don't like you get in, I need it. Okay, because here's the deal. With my own kids, hey, it's like, you know, sometimes I got to get up, use bathroom, and I see the light on 2 o'clock in the morning. It was on at 8, that's 7 hours. That's how I know that that's too much. And, you know, if they, they, they sleep in that tree, they got to get up at, what, 3 more hours for go school. That's why they said they're nodding their heads in school. Okay, they're still all tired. So we got to be on them. And I told the kids today, I said, when your parents say get off, Tell them, Dr. Kimo says, get off, okay? Not helpful. So we talked about that, and then I kind of ended with these take-home messages of, you know, wait till you're 25, adopt a lifestyle that triggers dopamine naturally, learn about addictive substance. If, you know, if, if I let them know, too, that because when, when they raise their hand and they say that somebody addicted in their family, I let them know that there's help out there for a mom, a dad, an auntie, uncle, big brother, big sister, you know, you just, the, the, the person got to be ready for help, too. Though. That's that's the thing. But, you know, this person was on, stuck for 12 years on meth, and she's better now. Way better. You know, so they got to have hope. I told them my definition of hope, hold on, pain ends, and don't have fear. Don't forget everything and run. Instead, face everything and recover. And then I said, you know, you got to stay alive. So I, I show them this uh, Narcan, which is this this thing, and it's real simple. It's I go, I go train you guys. It's peel it. Okay, take it out. And then you press it, you place it in the nose, and you press it. And it saves, literally saves a life. One person every 11 days dying, three people every 11 days staying alive because of this. 
Um, so every house should have one. You can get them at Long's Drugs. It's like 70 bucks if, if you have insurance um, or any pharmacy. Uh, if, and a house, any house with pain medication should have one. Um, or maybe a house with a kid who might be at risk for an overdose or, or you know, or you know somebody at risk. You know? So I give this to my, my, my son when he wouldn't go to one party because it's like, he was like, yeah, dad, I don't, I don't do drugs. I said, yeah, but maybe, if, maybe, some, maybe your friends, right? You don't know. So somebody pass out. So here's the training. They pass out. You wake them up. If they don't wake up, it's like call 911, and then you administer this. Wait two minutes. If it's an opioid overdose, it should come back immediately. Get two in each box. If after two minutes, you know, take out the other one. Same thing, boom. Same nostril or different nostril, no matter. And 98% of the time, if it's an opioid overdose, they should get right back up. Literally saving lives. That's why this Saturday at the Civic from 9 to 1, I've given away these boxes for free. Okay, I ordered 5,000 boxes. <laughs> so, you know, no sense come to, no sense stay in our pharmacy. It's more better stay in your cabinets or, you know, in our kids or, you know, so we can save lives. Um, so that's the presentation. I kind of ended with, the, with with some advice saying, hey, be careful with the one big liar. And that's that's if, you know, somebody trying to trick them, right? O stands for only one time. That's how you know they're lying. Okay, N stands for nobody gonna know. Yeah, right. When you stuck on drugs, everybody gonna know, okay? And then E is everybody doing them? No, that's a big lie. So I like them know because at least one time in their life, they're gonna be approached with that lie. And I like them remember, wow, Dr. Kimu said that was the big lie. And let them know that, nah. You and liar. They don't got to tell them liar, but in their mind, they know, hey, walk away because they're just trying to be tricked. Anyway, that's the presentation today. I wanted to um, share that with you folks. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Principal Heather, for allowing me to, to, to do this. And of course, uh, Jason, thank you too.